Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. For today's episode, it's all about Louisiana. So I'm making my version of cochon de lait po' boys. To start, I'm going to prepare the pork. Normally, for this type of po' boy, I'd be slow roasting a suckling pig for several hours. However, I was not sure where to get one, and I'm not comfortable working with a whole pig, no matter what the size is. So instead, I chose a bone-in pork shoulder that I'm going to slow cook in my Dutch oven. I decided not to trim the fat before adding the dry rub because, well, like they say in cooking, fat is flavor. When most people think about Louisiana, at least the people I know or spoken with, they mention New Orleans and Mardi Gras. For me, I think about jazz. Don't get me wrong, Mardi Gras is great. Love it. At the Franco-American Center, we always do a celebration for it. But for me, it's about the jazz music, and I want to go to the New Orleans Jazz Festival, which usually takes place in April. Since I've never been, I wanted to learn about the jazz festival and the foods that are served during that time. So I enlisted the help of two New Orleans natives, Shawanda Marie, who amongst other things, uh, specializes in authentic traditional New Orleans Creole cuisine, and Scott Tilton, who's the co-founder of the New Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that promotes French and Creole in the U.S. Links for both of their websites are in the description. Make sure to check them out. Okay, to add flavor to the pork, I'm cutting some slits into the meat, and I'm tucking in fresh cloves of garlic. If they're really big cloves, I'm cutting them in half. I do this to infuse the pork meat with the garlic flavor. When you're a tourist somewhere, we really only catch a glimpse of the places that we visit, right? Well, as natives, I was able to ask Shawanda and Scott if they could tell me in their words what they would want someone visiting Louisiana to know about, something you're not going to see on the brochures. Here's what they said a passion for living in every way. Very sensual people, you know, sensual food, taste, smells, touching the, the aesthetic of things is very much New Orleans and uh, artistic. And everybody, I believe, everybody's a star. Everybody has a gift in some way. Everybody's, a, you know, on stage all the time in New Orleans. You're meeting a character, you know, <laughs> that can do something that you've never seen before. But I think it's just the passion and the, the joy of life. Even in a place like New Orleans, where people would come from the outside and see certain parts of the city that look like, you know, there's nothing really going on or, you know, uh, impoverished. You know, even in that, in that poverty is very, very rich. There's lots of riches. So I think it's just the joy of life. You might see somebody break out dancing in the middle of uh, a department store or, you know, in a grocery store. People are very free, free. I, I love that. Um, I miss that, that freedom. So it's a thing. One is how much it's as much a lifestyle as it is a place. You know, I think that what's beautiful about New Orleans and all of Louisiana is that it there's this kind of juice, like it, this kind of like sweetness about the life down here. There's something about the fact there's music in the streets. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of ways that we, as a culture, negotiate somewhat of a precarious environment at times, but a way that we make the life really enjoyable and kind of very uh, outgoing. So I think that that's always enjoyable. I think the other aspect that I've been interested in is I, I just think that what I enjoy is just how kind people are. I think that you realize that it's just when they ask you how you're doing, they're genuinely asking how you're doing. You know, there's that kind of common phrase here. It's like, how's your mom? Okay. And so I think people really want to know how you're doing, how your family's doing, how everyone is. And then I guess a third al element of it is just how incredibly diverse it is here. I think mm. that there's a lot of different communities, different histories, but we're all kind of in this place and, you know, found ourselves in South Louisiana. And I think what's enjoyable is how cutting edge and how modern and resolutely forward-looking the culture is down here often. When I was looking up how to prepare the pork, there's a lot of versions, like anything else out there, right? I think you can kind of pick and choose what you like and what sounds the tastiest to you. And that's what I did. Okay, about ready to put the pork in the oven. I'm gonna just add chopped onion and enough chicken stock that the liquid covers about halfway up the meat. Now, I can tell you that the cut that I used, which was nine pounds, I used about two cups, but that might vary according to the size of your container and the size of meat that you're using. So it's one of those gotta eyeball it situations. This week's vocab is le chou. La cassonade, 
le bouillon de poulet, le cornichon, la marinade sèche, grillé, le porc effiloché. Okay, now the pork is in the oven. I'm going to make the coleslaw. I've got plenty of time, but there are certain types of food that taste best when the sauce or the dressing has time to sit and the flavors develop, and I find coleslaw is one of those types of foods. At times, it's difficult to find ingredients that aren't local to where you are, but this is when the internet comes in really handy and it can help you figure out substitutions or sometimes make your own. Also, I don't tend to eat overly spicy foods. Maybe it's the northerner in me, but I will say I have developed an appreciation for a little kick of piquant once in a while. I find Louisiana hot sauce is something that has a little kick, but also a little sweetness. During Mardi Gras, there are foods that are part of the tradition of Mardi Gras, such as king cake. So I was curious and asked Scott and Shawanda, you know, what are the foods at the jazz festival that are traditional? That when you attend the jazz festival, what is the food that you look forward to? You have a wide variety of, of foods. People are, you know, displaying their the culture, displaying the traditions. So you have a little everything out there. But I think the stars of the show are always the old traditional uh, New Orleans dishes that we love. The gumbos and the etouffees and the creoles, the shrimp creoles and, you know, all those things. The po' boys. Those are the, the, the things that stand out. Monica, <laughs> right? Crawfish Monica. Oh, and like the, the crawfish pies. People that are just wrapping around the, the family. Oh, my goodness. Yes. What are they called? It's crawfish Monica. Okay. I, I, think it was, I don't know if it's a recipe that predates it, but it's become this like signature dish during uh, Jazz Fest. And everyone is always lined up. And you can always know it's <laughs> crawfish Monica, like making around the fairgrounds. <laughs> so that's pretty much that's a star as well. But uh, it's, you know, I think Jazz Fest really leans on those traditional dishes. Okay, the pork is cooked and it's been about five hours. I went back and checked once in a while the doneness, especially when I reached about the three, three and a half hour mark, just to see it's not enough for it to be cooked. It needs to just basically fall off the bone, right? So now it's time to pull it apart. So as you can see, the bones fall away from the meat. And even though I left the meat sit for about 30 minutes, it's still kind of hot. And that's okay. It's really well cooked and it smells wonderful. My whole house smells incredible. So I'm going to take off the excess fat and the skin, of course, and I'm going to pull the meat apart. Our dog Gigi is going to love this big bone. She's actually staring at me right now, hoping I drop a piece of meat. <laughs> it's just because she looks pretty funny. The meat is super tender and so flavorful. You guys are going to love this. Okay, so I'm discarding the skin in any non-edible bits. I'm going to strain that to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, that's all done. I'm gonna reheat it while I get everything ready to put the po' boys together. Now, po' boys are a type of sandwich and usually it's made on a New Orleans French bread, which I made this morning. It's similar to a baguette, but the crumb is lighter and the shape is flatter. You, know, you want it wide enough to put the fillings on. For the dinner, I did not put mayonnaise on the po' boys, but as you can imagine with nine pound pork shoulder, I have a lot of leftover meat. So I did make po' boys for lunch the next day. And this time, I took mayonnaise, put a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce, quite delicious, and I put that on the bread prior to putting my meat. Et voilà, my version of the Louisiana Cochon de lait po' boys in honor of the New Orleans Jazz Festival. We all loved it. Nothing was left on any of the plates. I look forward to eating one in New Orleans in the not too distant future. I hope I can get there sooner rather than later. I would like to thank Shawanda Marie and Scott Tilton for their time and for sharing their love and their passion for their home. Merci à tous les deux. If you're interested in hearing Hearing our conversation in full, I will be posting it on this channel in uh, the next couple of weeks. Uh, so keep an eye out. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I learned a lot about the food, but also some very interesting traditions that it's not the same talking with someone who lives there as Googling something. It's They really made it come alive and I'm excited more than ever to visit Louisiana. I do hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll give your own po' boys a try. As always. Merci et à la prochaine